Guys, the machine is here. He is a machine, bro. You have to be. It's 25 people to sell his cards. This was at 1242. Luminary's mm. cut, 101. Deca, man. We think. It's badass. I don't want to go into a shop where stuff's stagnant, and that's never a problem at Burbank. <laughs> have heard of a trade up challenge, right? I'm gonna do a $5,000 trade down challenge. Right now, I have no inventory. I literally am out of cards that are between $2 and $150. All I have is some heavy hitters. So today, I'm going to be dealing with Ryan over here. We're gonna comp all these cards, get them, get them going, and I'm going to go into the showcases and pick out inventory that's between $2 and $150 for our whatnot stream because we stream every single Wednesday. You guys got to check it out. Make sure you bookmark it. That link is down below. I'm going to show you guys what I might trade down. This Jalen Hurts field pass. We got a LaMelo 10-10. Luka Doncic rookie auto from Opulence. We got a Jihad Campbell out of five. Justin Herbert Green Pulsar. Justin Fields PSA Diamond. A Dwayne Wade rookie autograph BGS 9510. Lamella Bolt, jersey number two. Justin Herbert Auto. Justin Herbert Rookie Patch Auto. And all this stuff. So, gonna see what happens. Another day at Burbank Cards. Let's have some fun. Here we go. Here we go. We're doing the trade down challenge. What the hell? It's a DECA. It's a DECA, man. What do you think? It's badass. Did you get this out of the show? Atlanta. Atlanta. Fields Flawless Diamond, Herbie, second year Mosaic Auto, 101 DeMar, Black Optic, that's sick. Herbie Green Pulsar Auto, Regio. I actually know a guy that knows this guy, really? which is kind of interesting. Field Pass Hurts, okay. Okay. Got some stuff to work with. We got some stuff to work with here. Mac right. Jones, that's tricky, but. Gotta send it to Boston. We'll figure it out. So, I mean, the Mac Jones, the raw. You, have a raw, you have a raw comp. Yeah. I mean, it looks a little bit beat up. And the patch isn't nearly as good. This is from like the helmet. Yeah. So you have a BGS eight, which is near mint mint, which is totally, totally accept uh, acceptable on a card like this. I mean, this is a really recent sale, so I'd obviously say because you have like the face, yeah, of the tag on it, I'm gonna give you higher value on it. So, what so we like on something it? like this, I'd probably be putting it at like 130, 140 as opposed to the 85 that sold. Maybe even like a buck fifty. I'm gonna give you 125, t 125 T, and then you can use that towards stuff you wanna buy. I don't want these cards anymore. And I'm not saying they're trap cards. I'm sure somebody can use these, but right now I need inventory because I sent both my buyers all my whatnot cards that I bought from you guys. Uh, I'm gonna give you 240 trade on this. Right, Last two are 270 and 290. And some of these I can take out, right? If I don't want yeah, to Yeah, yeah, 100%. All right. you think, where do you think this guy's going, Fields? Uh, Pittsburgh? I'm hoping he goes to the Falcons. This you have a sale in September for 500 bucks, but. His stuff is, uh... He's kind of dipped um, out a little bit. It's I mean, I know it's down a lot since then. So if you don't find the diamond, you just look up a different I'm just rate. looking for, like, diamonds or, like, um, whatever else. Oh, when you put minus, it actually doesn't include yeah, it? Yeah, it's going to take out all the other... Sick. It's going to take out all the other junk. Out of 15 in January, did 500. Because people are actually looking for his stuff right now. Yeah, I know. He's definitely... Because, I mean, yeah. the, the it's that video of him and his agent going crazy. Yeah. So he's going... He's probably going to a different team. Yeah. I'm just gonna give you 400 bucks straight on this. 95 did 115, Raw did 100 in January. This is a sale in June. There's not much on this. I'm just gonna look up what like uh, green does. So PSA 9 does 70 bucks for a green. The Atomic's honestly gonna be a little bit better than the green because people just don't like greens. So I'm just gonna put it at like 85 bucks and then give you trade off that. So you're, you're looking at you're looking at 70 trade on this guy. So let's, I wanna use this as an example. Yeah. So if I took, we'll use this one. Sure. So 400 trade, if yeah. I want to cash on this, where would we be at? I'd be at like 350 cash on that. Okay, so the cash does, so what's the difference between cash and trade? It's around 10%. Campbell. So some of you guys probably think like, man, why would he get rid of these cards? And my answer to you is they're just, some of these cards are not, like I either traded into them at a different price point and I'm sure you deal with this. Yeah. Like, I traded into them at a different price point. I bought into them at a different price point yep. and I just, I want to move down. I want to get out of my certain cards and get into some other stuff, which obviously the stack right there is what we're trying to go for after, but. Stuff that's so you put this at 40 trade. I put that at 40 trade. Maybe 20 trade on that. Some of the lower end stuff, the percentage is going to be a bit, bit lower. 
this is interesting because you've got like kind of a wide wide range on like what this card does but i'm going to kind of average it a little bit the comps 295 on auction mm. in Feb february 6th i mean this is this is a more realistic price than like what this is because at this point he might have still been playing january 14th i'm gonna give you 275 trade on that which is, should be fair on that and then herbert who's selling again no just any gold standard autos i've sold recently 600 bucks for 949 triple 300 bucks out of 75. That one's out of 49. This one's out of 49. Just from what I'm seeing here, I'm just gonna put it at like 450 and add a trade number here. So I'm gonna give you 380 trade for it. That's 1600 for an 8.5. You have a sealed copy. 1500 in December. 14 PSA 8. 16 sealed. So, I mean, sealed is. I'd put sealed probably like a step above 8.5. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Guys some, some are, prefer the stuff sealed. Obviously, yeah, there's course. no like major problems with it. And it looks like it's relatively fine. So we're just going to put it at 1550 at 85. We're just going to put it at 13, 13 and a quarter on that guy for the Luca. The is always tricky. Dude, he is. You have a 10, 10 for 900 and you have a raw for 300 recently, which so, I mean, these, these sales kind of add up. He just hasn't been playing. He hasn't been playing. He's gonna, gonna come we're back. Gonna put it at 340 at yeah, that. So I'm, I'm gonna give you 290 trade on the Lamelo. There's so many. Oh my God! You look yeah. like Griffey, Randy Johnson. Look at all these people. Mike Piazza. Dude, Piazza's my guy. A lot of these are like a little bit yeah. lower tier. What do you want for that? Like trade wise. I want 1200. One thing I don't like about the deck of books is they're a pain to like display and stuff like that. You know what I mean? No, I get it. So, but. What would you? What kind of trade could you give on it? Here, I have Griffey, yep. Clemens, Clemens, Maddox, Maddox, Johnson, Henderson, Jones. Chipper, Cal Ripken, oh, Piazza. Yeah. Griffey is the game changer Griffey's on the card. Griffey is the game changer, yeah. Uh, Piazza, Frank Thomas. Because like typically the ones without Griffey are doing like seven, yep. six to six. There's a redemption sale for 1400 July 1st of 2023. Which That's is, the card right there. Which is solid. That's it. That's probably one of them, yeah. If this was my card, I'd, I'd be asking 1500 bucks on it probably at least. I'd want to be at like 900 bucks on that. <laughs> If you wanted to trade it in, yeah, I completely understand if you want to hold it. All right, it's just then, uh, you know, we'll see where we're at. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're making moves, we're making moves. Is that everything? Uh, all you have to do is choose what you want to uh use, and we'll, we'll go from there, guys. Trade. The machine is here, he is a machine, bro. You have to be. Oh my god, you have to be. A Guess how much, how much do you think it's gonna be? Yeah, what, what's, the, what's the total? What do you think the total is going to be? I have no idea. What do you think the total is going to be? Guess. I'm more amazed at what, what Ryan just did right now. He just oh. priced all that. Oh my god. <laughs> Literally, no. man. This Dude, this is all yeah, you. I'm telling you, this is, a, this is a decade of uh, 10 key. Uh, just 10 key. Uh, what's the word? Gaming? Oh, well, gaming. Plus, also, I mean, a decade of 10 key usage, you know? That's how I add all my stuff. He's a machine. That's how I my stuff. I mean. <laughs> you want it? Down. So you're gonna ask 250. Yeah, I'm on the bet. Twenty. I'm on the bet. $1,200. 1200 bucks. All right, on that. So that's trade. That's trade value. <laughs> yep. All right. And if I sell all this, it'll leave me with 39.40 credit, which I could use at any time. Any point. And you're just gonna chalk it up. I'm just gonna chalk it up. So, in total, huh? just curious. 39.40 plus 1200. What is that? Uh, that's uh, 51.40. Wow. So five thousand dollar. The five thousand dollar prediction was. That was crazy. All right, let's lock it in. Lock it in? That's yeah, all you, bro. That's a deal? Yeah, that's a deal. All right. All right, so $5,100. I got $1,200 trade for a whatnot. And then we have $39.40 left to use. So he's going to chalk it up. Wow, I'm in up. the credit range. You're in the credit range. Dude, let's go. Dude, you know what? This, is, seal. Tragic, this is crazy. You know how much I paid for this? $2,000. Oh, it's not close. too bad. 1200 cash. It's it's I mean this isn't even Burbank. We looked at the comp. It was like four or five hundred bucks. It's ridiculous. It's a 69 tops Reggie Jackson that's been graded authentic from SGC and it appears to look mint. It's beautiful. They're saying it's been trimmed or at the very least doesn't meet the minimum size. Sometimes straight out of the pack, cards are deemed too short. They won't say that they're trimmed, but they just came out short. Okay. Then you have this card right here which is the same card, but it's a Reggie Jackson rookie, but it's an SGC2, which is a really low grade looking card. And it's not as visually attractive. It's not as, it's not centered. Well, it's just, a, it's, it's a two, it's a low grade one. So yeah, the I mean, question becomes, what would you rather own? What would you rather own? 
I mean, just the picture quality on one versus the other, it's not even close. The thing looks like it's out of the pack. Yeah. I mean, one of them looks like, you know, watching grainy TV back in the 70s, and this one looks like, <laughs> you know, a little closer yeah. to like 90s type yeah, television. Really yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's ask them. Would you rather have the two or the authentic? Would you say you'd rather have? I mean, I'm looking at the authentic, yeah. I'd rather, Especially the authentic. I'd rather the authentic. Yeah. It looks more visually appealing. Luminaries mm -hmm. Cut 101. About to ship it. I just sold it. Best wishes inscription. I love the card, but I got to sell it. I'm on to the next one. I need a Jordan Kobe auto, so I gotta keep stacking up the money and then the Riker comes up, the that's auction. Me. That's me fighting you for one. <laughs> Mark you for one too. 59 Jim Brown, 1965 Jim Brown, Mint 9. 1958 Jim Brown, BGS 5. This would have been a huge card. Devin Durant, 2007 rookie to UD Premier. Little Steph Curry, uh, it's one of my favorite cards. Contenders autograph on card. These are tough, man, because the autograph bubbles and obviously it disappears on that material. Black Gold, Steph Curry, 2000 Tops, Tim Duncan. Look at this. Well, I said I needed some 2 to 250, so I mean, this Dan Marino's a no brainer. That's beautiful. We're gonna pick that up. Let's do that. Boy, Howard in a Sixers uniform. Tom Brady ticket from 2013. Peel O'Neill logo, man. That Kobe's nice. Oh, look at that Giannis, real on card autograph. And Mahomes, all in one case. This is a cool one, the La Liga, Barcelona. And I love this. Check this Bo Nickel out out of 99. Greg Jennings out of five. So Tony, like this Buster Posey, Rookie Chrome. It's an authentic Shohei. Oh, John Smoltz. So what's going on the wax wall? Just run through it. Um, so we pretty much separate everything by sport. This is baseball. Uh, baseball goes into football and then it goes into basketball. Um, it's like playing Tetris on this wall. You kind of have to organize it. We try to keep everything in order. So like you'll see Gypsy Queen is together, like the Ginters are together. We don't really like having to scramble for things when it's out of place just because it takes up a lot of time and uh, it's not really eye appealing to customers when they have to look for things and they might miss things and we might miss things. So everything's in order. Yeah, I mean, some some uh, blank spaces, but we just get it all spread out and looking nice. and. And try to keep it like that. All of like the new collegiate Bowman stuff. Uh, that stuff is always hot. It's the hottest selling product out of all the boxes on the wall. What sells the best? It has to be baseball. It, ha it has to be draft. Oh, man, we do have it. Yeah, there it is. And it, that sells really well. That sells really well. The update was selling really well. And then the Chrome for the uh, the buybacks was selling really well too. Yeah. Just because people wanted all of that. The new NBA Prism. We have it for nine fifty. Actually, the price raised. We had it for eight ninety. The Wemby Chase is real. Yeah, the Wemby Chase is real. Choice is coming out. This is always more affordable. We keep uh, retail megas. Um, maybe some of the better stuff, like actual retail stuff that you'll see at like Target that they open up that we just get it sealed, which is always nice. But this is definitely more affordable, more for the kids. Parents love this wall. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. For obvious reasons. Yeah, it's cheaper. I mean, yeah. hobby, not everybody can spend nine fifty in a hobby box. Yeah, but no, twenty five dollars in a blaster. It's is not ridiculous. Bad. I mean, even one pack is eighty five bucks, and you can get burned on it. So versus just opening a good thirty dollar box. No, hundred percent. We have more retail here. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is going to be soccer, um, UFC, racing, um, some of like the Star Wars, non sports stuff that people love. Older wax, uh, some sets. We do soccer over here. I think our soccer wall is really nice. A lot of stuff is like European exclusive, which is really hard to get. But Show me those. Which ones are those? Uh, European exclusive. I don't even think we we have any European exclusive stuff. I mean, the newest stuff for soccer is is probably the prisms. We have the hobbies. Uh, we have the breakaways. They also have the choice, but we didn't get the choice. Chronicles, prism. We have great Obsidian. soccer products. Oh, look at all those. Jeez. Yeah. The soccer sell well here. Soccer sells very well here. I think it's something that after the World Cup just took off and now that they're doing the next world cup uh here i think by then this soccer will be booming this is first year ufc prism that's a big boy box all these big pokemon boxes we have bigger ones in the case i mean ben keeps the pokemon stuff dialed really well that's the wax one with yeah. Andrew. there are more cards coming <laughs> dude what do you think i do all day around this place it's burbank damn it so we got a fresh triple of stuff that ray just got priced up 
and we're going to be trying to fill as many bullet holes as possible. People are waiting. People are waiting. waiting for some restock. Waiting for some restock. Let's see, what do we got in here? A lot of lower end stuff that he just priced from, some of it's from this morning's buys, actually. Is this Josh Young? So. No, there's your guy. Normally I do it um, by price with the most expensive in the middle, and then it kind of works its way out. Right now I'm just putting them out because I got so much to do. All right. And I'll deal with organization a little bit later. You Whoa. can't beat that. 73 Carlton graded for 10 bucks. Steel. I don't know who prices this. Rob, we have a huge surprise for you. What's that? Look to your right. Oh. Oh. Wow. Where did this come from? What's the story with these? Um, I had a really good day and I thought about getting something bougie and <laughs> this is bougie. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you guys, my favorite place. Appreciate it, man. This is the stuff that just sells. And remember, these cards aren't online. We will cycle them online in the next day or two. You see these sexy slabs, ooh, I hit this, and some bro is screaming into a phone. At the end of the day, the stuff that really sells and really matters are the cards that most people can afford and the cards that are going to go into their collections and they're going to keep them for years and enjoy them. And that's what we provide at Burbank. This showcase here will have all the other sports. It'll have soccer, MMA, wrestling, etc., gaming. So they don't deserve their own showcase. We kind of put them all together. Pandemic, obviously, we could say price differences were there. But like pandemic, let's just say 21, 22. You guys have been still operating off the same process. People are coming in to trade in and yeah. buy in. Like Whatever the market is at that current time is what you operate in. And but you've been doing this since the beginning of 2020. Oh, yeah. We've been doing it at scale since then. And uh, to be honest, we've sold far more cards now than we were selling then. Why is that? because A, we, there's a supply out there now that wasn't there before. Everything was sitting at PSA. Back then they had millions and millions of cards sitting there. Now all the stuff's in the marketplace. And now so much of the stuff has come down to the right levels that we sell far more cards. Because okay? people can buy cool Max Verstappen cards, PSA 9 for 15 bucks, which it costs at least that just to grade it. And people just love this kind of stuff. So I love the fact that the market is where it is right now. I think for the long-term health of the hobby, it's a great thing. See me pretty much gives Ryan a list of like wax that they need. So Steve and I pretty much just scan it out of inventory. Make sure, make sure everything is correct and before contact. we give it to them to count. I noticed Rob's obviously in charge of singles. Steve, you're you're all about the wax, huh? That's it. Okay. He's all and about the wax. Amongst other things. What's your favorite thing to do here? Going home. <laughs> but work. Work, all right. Nah, St Steve, Steve does like wax and then, and then he also makes sure that like all of the supply section is pretty much like up to date. He's a unit of his own. He knows like whatever's on back order. His memory is better than mine, I'll tell you that. He's sharp. He's sharp. I wonder when we watch this in five, 10 years where Wemby will be. I know. I, I was talking to that. I was talking about that to my friend. I was like, man, you know, is, is like the, are the Wemby Prism cases a hold? I mean, there's a lot to talk about. There's one no auto, so yeah. I mean, how how much is that box value gonna go? There's numbers stuff gonna go down because are they just inflated? And then Ben said you're the Bowman guy. Yeah, Ben, he's, he's the Bowman the, guy. He is the Bowman guy. You're gonna rip these personally? Yeah. Okay, so what's your what's your favorite rip setting? Like you gotta be like at your desk. Like what do you do? Watch Ta the game. What is it? Table. Got the computer next to me. Watching some games. A nice Modelo. You just chug it. <laughs> All right, that's a vibe. And you never open your boxes in the store? Some. You pulled an orange Brady? Mm -hmm. Casual, he didn't even mention it. All right, good luck. Bradenburg. That's out of 71. Mm. Holster Maldrip. Last one. Devin Saltaban. Out of 100. So who are we, so we're looking for Brady in those? Brady, Why Langford, Max Clark. Clark. Well, when you're having your Modelo in the game, I think that's gonna have the. That's what. Okay, that's what it is. We'll call it. Let's see it. You on IG? Yeah. What is it? Uh, Mandizi bobbles and cards. Okay. Yeah. Mandizi bobbles and cards. One of the biggest Kobe What's collectors up, on Instagram. Too legit. All right, Dennis, you get to pick one card that no, to buy. What are you no. buying? I always like the exquisite golds. That's kind of a sneaky play. Why do you like that card? Uh, I mean, it's exquisite. It's gold number to 25. Those are super rare. And look at that one. That oh, I mean, that's a very sneaky one. Is it a one of one? That's a one of one platinum ultimate collection from 0304. I want to say. What's your take on Kobe's value? Because obviously, it's going. It's gone. It's evened out. Do you think Kobe's value could I'm go? I'm buying. So I'm, buy I'm buying Kobe's. Yeah. Because I'm it's buying. low enough. 
uh, he's, he's affordable. I can get into his on-card autograph for under 2K now. I mean, that was unheard of like a couple years ago. This is, I actually I bought two this morning on Instagram. It was like an upper deck slam from like 2000, 2001. Another one is uh, the sign of the times. You rank Kobe above LeBron, right? He's my book, yeah. I may be biased, but you know. But do you think statistically LeBron could outdo Kobe? Um, I think he's already the done that as far as championships he still has a little bit more to go um i hope he gives uh, la another championship that would be amazing you put mj above kobe though right of course okay good that's 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 the real go something i always did was i would always buy lebron and use his trade bait to get into more kobe's so really so that was always my thing even back in 2003 i was doing that lebron rookie autographs for like two three hundred bucks and flipping them for kobe's jay that's upper deck black one of my favorite sets that's one i love that set i love it, that it set. was a little thing it came with two packs one box two yeah. packs yeah and they had it, the american flag it, patch autos yes the Mar yes and also it, it, the packs were clear so like right when you open up the box you could see you can instantly see what card you're, you're getting. Just by looking at the card, the aesthetics, the gold and the silver ink. I mean, it does look good. They're on card too. They're all on card. Um, I did, they had a few sticker autographs, but majority were on card. And just like exquisite. I mean, most exquisite, actually all exquisites were except for like a few. I remember like Scotty Pippen had a sticker autograph out of like limited logos from like 05, 06, but very rare you see sticker autographs from that era. Fanatics and Tops are gonna take over, but you have to give love to Panini. Of course. What nice things could you say about Panini and like your favorite set? What would you say about Panini since um, Tops and Fanatics are gonna take over the next two, couple years here? So a couple things I love about Panini is they made more Kobe autographs. I mean, did you like Flawless? I mean, it's right here. Yeah, of course, Flawless is, is our main. I, I was never a fan of actually the rubies or the greens. I was always a fan of like their gold and their gold hollow foils. I like the kabooms. I don't mind the kabooms. Actually, I owned a Kobe gold kaboom once upon a time. It's called why, is this, why is it so good? Um, the set is called 24 karat gold and each card is numbered to 24. I actually had the Kobe once upon a time. What's missing in this set is actually Jordan. Jordan's actually, if Jordan was in that set, it'd be a huge card. He actually appeared in some 98, 99 sets because they thought he was going to continue playing. Um, by but once Jordan stopped playing, they weren't going to put him in cards anymore? Exactly. Because he was, he, I guess he was on in the players' union. I guess he didn't have a contract to be in any more products. He was in Upper Deck products just because he still had an exclusive partnership with Upper Deck at the time. That's why you still continue to see uh, 99, 2000, 2000, 2001. Or just some stuff you got at the Burbank show. Just like a Mahomes gold autograph out of five. And here's a Mahomes color wheel, gold. It's number to 10. Pop one. You want to get on the list? Yeah, check this out, man. Right here. Bam, let's go. Wow, one of one. How hard is it to get on the list here? It's easy. I'm VIP. Is he VIP, Dre? He is VIP. What's your favorite? Why do you choose this shop to sell to over any others? They pay the strongest, to be honest. They take care of you? They take care of me. Ryan takes care of me usually, so he's a little busy today, so I'm coming over to see this guy who he pays pretty strong so i'm gonna test him out wow i'm dealing some liquid this one stuff you don't see i wouldn't say it's the easiest to move but hey cool host future watch don't see him often what would you say the state of the sports card market is right now if you compare it to the last couple of years it's dog shit. if over the long run it's probably we're getting back to where it was before the pandemic which is good i like it better that way because i collect i'm glad there's not a 2020 mosaic base card going for 300 bucks as a PSA 10. I feel like a lot of people will agree with you. Look at this. Uh, 25. What do you think of this? Yeah, that's sick. That's super sick. We got Kobe, Elgin Baylor, yeah, Ashford right Torch. Here. Yeah, go for it, bro. Right so the wild thing about this is this was the people freaked out when I was collecting this year. It's 1011 Elite Black, and they manufactured the logo mans, which freaked people out. So if you look on these cards, it says the enclosed game-worn material by Panini America, but it's talking about this, not that. Kids, they come here, $70 each day. I don't know how they get it, but they come here and they just shop, you know. Hey, and tell me what you said. You learn a lot about business through here that you didn't learn in college. In college, yeah. Instead of paying $20,000 in college to learn business, right. we're learning business here. Talking to each other, bumping into each other, selling cards. We don't have to go to college. Here, Business dude. is here. Bourbon Card University, baby. There we go. Let's there we go. go. Ryan's the head professor. <laughs> Rob's the principal. Jeez. And Ray, 
George, George, Jordan, you guys are the experts. In order to get on video, you need to spend more money. I always do. <laughs> no, not enough. Right. Okay. No, enough. he's messing around. That's great. Just, just because he brings me a, a bread, he thinks that he can get away with spending very little. You see how much stuff he's buying up there right now? It's insane. So how do you, you guys are buying at the highest capacity in the world right now. Oh yeah, it's not even close. I mean, I don't know how many shops have 25 different people selling them cards on a list less than two hours into the day. Nobody walks in here to see the same inventory every day. That's 25 people on a list to sell us cards. This was at 1242. Why do they come to Burbank to sell cards? A, because we buy, uh, a lot of shops don't, and we take everything, it's not just you know, autos and rookies and stuff. Oh it's just stuff. Numbered. It's just everything. And we put a number on it and we have the ability to process it so that someone is selling us cards here. There's another person in the showcase buying them there. But actually, it's the online business, which is that much bigger. So we're not cherry picking. We try to be fair. If it's really good stuff, we pay really good. If it's stuff that's just meh, we don't pay really good because we've already got it. So now you're taking a card that you already have two of and you're making it four. So these are cards that are not online, that are freshly bought. Those look, showcases look at this. were filled. There's nothing left. I know. It's I empty. those things filled yesterday. Yesterday, we added 250 fresh slabs to those showcases. I even shot a video on it and showed people exactly what we were doing. So how do you, what do you do now? Are you gonna restock or how does well, this Well, I mean, you have to have the inventory to restock. We're buying a lot of stuff, but then you need the time to actually work on the cards as well. Jordan and Ray will be buying at some point. Ray will probably start pricing all the stuff yeah. and we'll try to get as much of it filled tomorrow. But that's why we need to buy so much stuff is because we can't have bullet holes in the showcases. Yeah. So Boom. it's this constant challenge. Our raw showcases, I mean, those are a joke. That's something I noticed too. It's, it's between $2, two dollars and 250 is getting absolutely just taken. It's just collectors coming through. And this is a price so point that's so great. Does this panic you that you don't have much in here? Um, it's a first world problem. It's great that you're selling as many cards as you're selling, but it's a problem that you can't keep it full. And a lot of that is just because we're so bogged down with all the better stuff that we don't get to this as much as we can. We're actually changing some processes where cards that might have gone straight to eBay before are now being put into these cases going forward. Um, so they won't be on eBay yet. Now they'll get cycled and get there, but they might get their first shot here for some of these five and 10 and $20 cards. Um, so yeah, we're always changing. We're always you know, kind of morphing in, into what our customers want. All right, guys, so we're obviously buying a crap ton of cards. Is there a reason that you come here and buy all these cards? Or you guys just like Ryan? Or, Ryan. Yeah. Is that Ryan? Yeah. Ryan, yeah. Ryan sure. Ryan's pretty lovable. Good variety, everything's priced right. So these right here, we have the daily cases. So what happened was last week, these cards, actually these, God, this showcase got ravaged. We start with 250 cards every day when we load those. So these were the cards that we did yesterday. And whatever remains from what we sold um, online goes in here, but we have so many repackers these days that need volumes of inventory and they just hit us hard. So if you don't get to look at our sneak preview cases, it becomes a problem because these showcases were overstuffed with cards and you can see you know, Clemente rookies, huge Josh Allens and, you know, really cool stuff. Everyone's like, what's new? I can answer it like that. I can tell you exactly what's new. These cards are new. Those are new. Those are new. It's, you know, you don't want to go into a shop where stuff's stagnant. And that's never a problem at Burbank. Wow, tag card. That's cool. It's a good looking card. Uh, this is going to the left and right. How is this organized? It's all by sport. And so that's the first step that you always have to take when you're buying things is to break it by sport. I've been working like a dog getting stuff off my floor. So, so this this stuff here is not priced yet. No, none of this is priced and yet. And how, how, how do you decide what goes out <laughs> there and what goes out into that freaking card library? Out yeah, of all this, how do you figure this out? Yeah, so basically all the graded stuff 
will go into the showroom, whether it's the value slabs in the fishbowl all the way up to the five and $10,000 cards that are constantly hitting. Also the premium cards, and you can see these are all cards for the showcases yeah, that nice. Ray is gonna price. Um, this is all, cause we're really low on this stuff. So it'll be priority. Hopefully Ray will get that all priced. So this is the first step when you buy deals, you have to break it by sport first. And this stuff can be garbage. It could be commons. It could be, you know, pretty cool stuff. You know, it just depends. But everything goes through here first. Like example, this, like what, how do you decide? Oh, I mean, this is going to go. That's going to go. No, it's probably going to go online. Okay. I can't see who it is. Jalen Phillips. Yeah, it'll probably go online. But so this is all basketball. This literally was baseball was crazy. I had 11 boxes of it. So this is all baseball, basketball, football. This right here is all soccer. That's come in. You buy you buy all this like yeah. this silver prism. It's like twenty five cents probably. Mm -hmm. Like some shops wouldn't do that. Why do you buy this stuff? Like couldn't it be a waste of time and money? Because you want to buy things, you got to buy it all. Nobody likes to be cherry picked. So we try to put numbers on the whole deal. But then again, other shops don't have um, our warehouse in order to sell cards. So these are the types of cards that we can quickly get in the database, quickly get online. And these are the cards we sell thousands of a day. Um, the reason why nobody else wants to deal with it is exactly the reason why we want to deal with it. And it's amazing. Any card that you could get out to the wider market, like eBay or whatever, you have a chance of selling. We donate if there's a lot of commons. Now there might be commons from Rookies and Stars 23 football that we've hardly gotten any of. And we'll get excited. We'll get that worked into the database. But when people bring Prism, Mosaic, Optic, Chronicles, the stuff that everybody's hitting you with, we already have plenty. We have more than we can sell. We'll put them into boxes like this and we'll donate it. So I'm always building boxes. Most of it will go to Burbank, Parks and Rec, Little Leagues, things like that. I have somebody I just text and they come and pick it up and they love it. They find a use for it. This is football premium for OMG, old man Greg, we call him. Uh, so, OMG, who, tell me about old man Greg real Old quick. man Greg's been with me 15, 20 years, um, sorted stuff from home for years. Now he's in the shop doing retail, but he loves to keep busy and we keep him busy. So what this stuff is, this stuff is all like non-23 basically. We'll go through and pull the newest stuff, but this is like TJ Watt rookies, things of this nature. All these cards are going online. So what happens is when I break down all the new football stuff, I'm gonna pull Prism and Select and Select Draft and Mosaic and stack it up and give it to my guys by brand. But all this older stuff, and you'll see stuff that goes all the way back. Well, I don't know what's in this. Let's fly through, let's see. But this stuff right here isn't as current as the new stuff that I really need done. So what he'll do, is he'll take these boxes and he'll break it down by year. And then we have breakdown boxes by year in sport. So this will go into the 20 football, the 18 football. Then eventually we'll get to that point and get these cards worked. But the priority is always 22, 23, 24. That's the majority of the things that come in. And that's the majority of the stuff that we sell online. I've seen a lot of card shop owners say they can't leave their card shop. Do you have to be here for things to get done, you think? Yes, unfortunately, it's really kind of hard to teach some of the things that we do here. I enjoy it, so it's not like a chore for me. Um, if I'm not here a couple of days, I pay the price because all the new arrivals start stacking up. But with my job, I'm kind of the, the hub of the spoke, the wheel, where I make sure all the cards are going where they're supposed to go. I don't pull orders, I don't ship, I don't answer emails. For the most part, I don't do retail. I don't do the books. I don't do any of that. My job is to deal with the flow of cards and to make sure that they all go where they're supposed to go. What's a screw down? <laughs> well, we get some old school deals that are still in screw downs. And why did, this, people, why did people use these? Because they were the standard back in the day when people wanted to show off their cards, give it a little extra protection, anything like that. The vast majority of premium cards were in screw downs back then. And so people will come in with them and I put them all to the side. And, you know, if somebody needs something to do, that's a cool card, right? Michael Vick, Vince Young. Yeah. Oh, no, there's some cool stuff in here. Don't get me wrong. It's just I have somebody that does these all at once. Well, you have a screw down person that 
I got I got a screwy person. But yeah, if somebody's sitting around doing nothing, if we're slow, I'll hand those over to them with a with a Phillips screwdriver and say, I just need these things pulled out. Wow. So there's you know, it's it's just constant. Take out screw downs. Take out of screw downs. I mean, every one of these boxes means something. I mean, this is all fresh MMA. And there's some really cool stuff in here. This is just when you buy deals. Again, you break it by sport Ooh. first. And it's just... UFC is fire. There's some really cool stuff. And this is the stuff that, for the most part, will go next door. Okay, so basically, so far today, these are the cards that they bought over the counter. It's not organized. Obviously, nobody's organized when they bring things in. So our first job with this stuff is going to be to break it down by sport. Baseball, basketball, football. And these are the boxes that we fill. I've already sorted out. This is from the last hour or so. Ray's already pricing the stuff that we bought earlier today, which is crazy. But you'll see, that's in a crappy bag. This isn't bagged. This isn't bagged. So I'm going to roar through these and make sure they're freshly bagged and throw them on Ray's desk as well. He'll get them priced. A lot of it still might go out today. Um, and these, there could be some really good stuff in here too. I don't, I don't know what's in here. I know that's a pretty good card. The Calrelli? Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. So, I mean, it's not just commons. It's all kinds of cool things just rubber band up. So this stuff will get broken by sport. I'll also put all the premium raw, like that Cal Raleigh, to the side. Again, that's going to be a priority to get done. And this is what we do every single day, because the first step is always to break it down by sport. And I like to get it going ASAP because otherwise it gets out of control and you don't even want to look at it. So if I stay on it in real time when the stuff's coming in, stuff can go to everybody um, efficiently. Like yesterday, I was real proud of the team. We add a lot of cards to the site. My guys are constantly pounding fresh stuff to the site. So yesterday, we were working on some baseball. Just as an example, 2023 Bowman's Best Baseball. This is how I get the stuff organized for them. Now they're getting all the images done, as you'll see. But we added 265 different cards to our existing inventory, just in 23 Bowman's Best alone. Mm. And that's how quickly we're able to take it from things that are coming in to fresh cards hitting the site. And these new cards didn't even have images. So we've already got the images done today as well. So that's the efficiency that we're looking for from your random, unorganized raw to will get it in a place where we can get it to our website and hence be able to push it to eBay as well. I'll give me an example. This RJ Barrett's not going out there. No. So when you're sorting this, where are we putting this? No. Um... Oh my God. <laughs> you freaked me out. I was like, oh shoot. No, but I mean, still. No, some of the cards actually do hit the trash can. Yeah. Because they're just not worth looking at. We have player boxes that we put together. Where, where, That's a where, card. Does this, where does this go? It's probably going to go in our RJ Barrett backstock. Okay. Um, I've already got too many of them on the website. Where does like, this go? That's going to go online. That's going to get broken down in the baseball stack. It's going to get broken down by year, and eventually we'll get back to that. Tom Glavin right it's an, there. It's a nice card, probably like a $40, 50 card. Yeah, it's going to get taken Where out of... That? That's going to get taken out of the holder, get into a fresh holder. It's going to get priced at whatever. Wait, you're going to take this out of the magnetic? Yeah, look at the magnetic. But that's... Dude, it looks like ass. And you're, you're, you're telling me you're going to replace that magnetic. I didn't even think you, I didn't even know you did that. Yeah. Goes in the trash can. I'd rather have it in, in a top. clean top load than in some crappy looking magnet. So it's going to go into this and it's going to so go cleanly in the showcase. I had no idea that was even happening here. Oh, yeah. Most of the supplies look like crap. If you look at most of the ones, they're all scratched up, you know. One of one. That's a good showcase card. No? Yeah, that's going to go in the raw showcases. But again, if you can catch the light the right way, you can see it's not a clean magnet. And do you think we the scratches on this is it's it's saying okay we don't take care of our cards? Well, it's just you know if you're going to have magnets like that, you really should put bags around them when you do it because they're going to scratch up against all the other cards. And again, I'm presenting cards, I'm marketing, I'm merchandising cards, so I can't have stickers priced here or here or dirty mags. It's got to be clean every single time where you're putting the sticker and making sure that all your supplies that you're using are clean. Now, if it's a three or $400 raw card, we'll give it a clean magnet, you know, cause you want to do that for your better cards. And then I'll whip out the magnets that are over here oh, and, I'm, them. I, and I'm constantly refilling clean magnets and we'll use those for the really nice raw cards. But for 20, $30 cards, we simply don't do that. I'm a retail store. 
things have to look a certain way. If you were to go into a retail store and you saw the stuff was in plastic, but it was all scratched up, that's a bad look. Why should it be any different in the trading card Where did you learn that from? Um, like, where did you learn the skill set of presentation? From Don Osborne. He was my boss when I first came to work, 12, 13, 14 years old in a coin shop. He wanted to make sure everything looked a certain way. Showcases were designed certain ways because you just got to put yourself on the other side of the counter. If I'm looking at cards in the showcases and they're old, dirty top loads or they're scratched magnets, it's just not a good look. It's a lazy look. And so we want to make sure that everything that hits the showcase has freshly tight bags, no wiggle room, just nice and tight and clean. Um, I think that's one of the appeals of the shop is just the merchandising, the presentation. And I think that gets lost in, in a lot of cases. We are a retail storefront. Like they bought this for six, it'll probably go out for 10. This one they paid 15. Now that's a nice clean bag. And I'm like, okay, I don't need to redo that one. That's actually, someone actually cared about their cards. These are nice. You can look at them and go, yeah, that looks great. So I don't have to do those, but it's it's more often than not that it either doesn't have a bag, which is ridiculous. You got to bag your slabs, otherwise they're gonna scratch. And you know, and I I tell Ryan all the time, man, if it, if something scratched all the hell, you gotta pay less for it because you know what? It's not as attractive as someone else that has the same card in the same grade that's not scratched. I mean, it's a good tool because people at home that are you know watching this video, organizing their cards as they watch. They can clean team bag their stuff. They can organize it alphabetically. They can organize it by sport, by year, break it down, similar to how you do it, even if it's just a hobby. Yeah, even if it's just your your PC that fits on a couple shelves, it doesn't matter. You get your maximum enjoyment out of something where it has some kind of organization. And if you're trying to create an eBay store or a small retail store, you're gonna find that once you have it organized and repeatable, it's going to be better for you because you can find cards in your inventory so much quicker for the customer because the customer shouldn't be waiting for you to do your job. And, and that's critical. And so everything that goes through here that hits the showroom, we know where it's at. And that's huge. And customers shouldn't have to wait on you. So um, again, it's just all part of the processes that, you know, kind of create the experience, whether it's virtual or physical. We got a two out of 10 Woody. Dude, people love Disney, bro. They love it's Disney. it's wild. Hey, you know Ready what, third. Woody can't win a championship, but he saved the toys. He did, many times. What a great day, Burbank cards. That's Shout it. Shout out to Rye. Shout, Shout out to Jab, Blue Sports cards. Shout out to Legit to Quit. Shout out Ray. That's the goat right there. Head chef, baby. Hey. Let's go. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. This was a true trade down challenge. Sometimes you got to be willing to take a loss to move forward in sports cards and in life. Ooh, we're getting serious here. You guys are smiling at me. Burbank Sports Cards is the best place to buy and sell your sports cards and hang out and just have a good vibe. That's why, yes, man. Sir. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you need a Zion case, use my code MOJO10. And I'm live every single week on Whatnot on Wednesdays. Go ahead and tap in down below. Use that link down below to get your first $10 spend. And with that, another episode of Burbank Sports Cards in the books. We'll see you next time. Peace.